Welcome to our ongoing series of videos on loads. We're dealing with the classification of loads and in particular we're focusing on dead loads or the loads associated with fixed elements in the building. This is chapter 2, subsection, uh, section 2, subsection 2. Um, <clears throat> here are some of the densities of common building materials. Wood the common structural grades range from 25 pounds per cubic foot to 40 pounds a cubic foot. There are some kinds of hardwoods that are substantially denser than this, but in fact most of our structural grades are actually in the range of 25 to 35, and the only time we get up around 40 pounds a cubic foot is when we're dealing with something like particle board, which is not just wood, but it's uh, densely impregnated with plastics or glue of some sort. Concrete with heavy aggregate unreinforced is 145 pounds a cubic foot. When we reinforce it with steel, the steel has a much higher density, but there's much less volume of steel, so the overall average density of reinforced concrete would be about 150 pounds per cubic foot. The difference between the 145, which is unreinforced, and the 150, which is reinforced, is the higher density in those portions of the volume that are occupied by steel. Aluminum has a density of 165 pounds a cubic foot, and steel is the densest material that we commonly deal with, and it's 490 pounds per cubic foot. Now, we sometimes express weights in different ways. For example, um, that same concrete with heavy stone aggregate uh, is described as 150 pounds per cubic foot, but we sometimes do that in uh, its weight per inch of thickness. So, for example, a one inch thickness on average uh, weighs 12.5 pounds per square foot of area per inch of thickness, uh, in essence. And uh, we have a lower density for slag, and then we have lightweight aggregates like pumice, which is fairly porous, and we can get concretes down as low as six pounds a square foot per inch of thickness. So let's talk about how we derive these numbers. And by the way, the reason these numbers are so nice is we can say, well, if we have a four inch thickness, we just multiply four times this number and that gives us the weight per square foot of the material. But let's go look at the mathematics of that for a moment. For one inch thickness of reinforced concrete with heavy aggregate, on average, its density is 150 pounds per cubic foot. Um, granted, of course, if we take a one inch thickness, we may not even have any steel in that, but on average these numbers work. So the weight per unit area of a floor slab, for example, will be the density times the volume, that's weight, is density times volume. The density is 150 pounds per cubic foot, and the volume of a one inch thickness that's a square foot um, will be one inch times a foot times a foot. Now, we'd like to cancel out some units and clean everything up, and the one thing that sort of sticks out like a sore thumb is this one inch unit, and we'd like to convert it to feet. So everything is in feet, and everything simplifies as much as possible. So we're going to, inside this square bracket, we're going to write one in units that are helpful to us. So we'd like to cancel out the inch. So we put 12 inch in the denominator, we put foot in the numerator, so this is a way of writing one, which is going to cancel out that inch with this inch, and we'll end up with feet cubed above feet cubed here. So this entire numerator is going to be in pounds by the time we get done. And basically we're going to divide this 150 uh, by this 12. So we have 12.5 pounds per square foot per one inch of thickness. In some texts and references, this is actually expressed as 12 pounds per square foot of area per inch of thickness. 
So that's what we have here is the 12.5 pounds per square foot and it's indicated here that that is for a one inch thickness of that slab. For a five inch thickness of reinforced concrete with heavy aggregate, we just take that value that we just derived, 12.5 pounds per square foot of area per inch of thickness. We multiply that times five inches of thickness and we get 62.5 pounds per square foot of area. So the whole point of this table is to make really simple calculations like that possible calculations that you can basically do in your head. And these tables were derived back when that's how most calculations got done because they didn't have calculators or spreadsheets. Okay, so continuing on, there's a bunch of other things that are given all, almost always in a per square foot basis. Um, Let's go jump down to something interesting here. Let's take hollow core concrete uh, block, or excuse me, hollow concrete block made out of light aggregate uh, eight inches thick. This weighs 38 pounds per square foot of wall. In other words, when you stare at this eight inch thick wall, straight at the wall, every square foot of that wall weighs 38 pounds, 38 pounds per square foot. This is immensely helpful. This is much more useful than the previous calculation uh, based on one inch thickness of solid concrete because that concrete is solid and the geometry of working that out is pretty simple. In the case of concrete block, the hollow cores are odd shapes. We don't know what they represent. So suppose we're looking at a wall, which is 10 feet tall, that's made out of this eight inch thick light aggregate block that weighs 38 pounds a square foot. So here we've shown the wall and the footing and we've separated them and we're showing the forces that exist between them. So these arrows represent the upward force of the footing on the wall and these arrows represent the downward force of the wall on the footing. So for every linear foot along the wall at the base, the support is having to hold up a 10 foot high column, or in other words, 10 square feet of this wall. So if one square foot weighs 38 pounds, uh, this one foot by 10 foot column of concrete block weighs 380 pounds, or in other words, 10 times 38 pounds. So the load along the base of this wall, the upward force is 380 pounds per foot, or in other words, the, the force of the wall downward on the footing is 380 pounds per foot. That ends our discussion of dead loads or fixed elements, the self-weight of fixed elements on structures.